organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Thanks for tuning into your latest edition of Daily Island TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Island. I'm Samantha Bear, broadcasting from the Daily Island Newsroom. Members from the Iowa Board of Regents met with Sally Mason on Monday to discuss fundraising practices. The ethics of the U.S. fundraising practice has been under criticism following recent articles published by the Des Moines Register. President Mason has arranged a meeting between board members and U.I. Foundation officials to review fundraising practices and policies. Critics say the current policy uses patient information inappropriately for donating. The university has defended its practice as ethical. Vice President Joe Biden has announced that he plans to visit Eastern Iowa this week. On Tuesday, Biden will visit Waterloo, where he will speak with members of the United Auto Workers and will focus on the company and economy. <laughs> on Wednesday, Biden will stop in both Dubuque and Clinton. Iowa will be one of several key swing states in November's election. The Information Technology Facility has recently become the first building on the UI campus to receive Platinum Level LEED certification for its environmentally friendly design. After seven years of planning and three years of construction, the new Information Technology Facility was completed last December. The 43,000 square foot, $30 million facility was completed at the University and its hospitals. Roughly 32% roughly of the construction materials were recycled, and a bioretention cell were absorbed water runoff to help prevent erosion. These are just two of the building's environment features. According to a report in Scientific America in 2011, only 20 higher education buildings in the U.S. achieved platinum level LEED certification. And now, for a quick sports update, we go to Daily Iowan TV sports reporter Nick Fetty at the Daily Iowan Sports Desk. Even though kickoff for the 2012 Iowa football season is still 68 days away, this weekend gave Iowa fans something to be optimistic about. According to Scout.com, Iowa received verbal commitments from three recruits, two of whom were from in-state, making them the first two Iowans in Iowa's 2013 recruiting class. Trayvon Young, a 6'4", 220-pound linebacker from Lincoln High School in Des Moines, is a two-star recruit who recorded 47 solo tackles, five of which were for a loss, and two fumble recoveries during his junior season. Young also had offers from Iowa State and South Dakota State. Ike Boatger, a 6'5", 220-pound tight end from Cedar Falls, also committed to the Hawks over the weekend. Boatger played quarterback in high school, throwing for 750 yards and nine touchdowns during his junior season. Solomon Warfield, a 6'0", 170-pound defensive back from St. Edward High School in Lakewood, Ohio, was the third recruit the Hawks nabbed over the weekend. Warfield is a three-star recruit and is listed as the number 40 safety on Scout.com. Warfield also had scholarship offers from a handful of other Big Ten schools, including Michigan State, Illinois, and Penn State. And while the 2013 recruiting process has been mostly successful for Kirk Ferentz and his squad, the Hawks also lost out on some in-state talent last weekend. According to Scout.com, Sam Raridon, a 6'3", 264-pound defensive tackle from Valley High School in West Des Moines, has verbally committed to the Wisconsin Badgers. Raridon was offered a scholarship by Iowa last summer. Despite the loss, Iowa still currently has 15 verbal commitments who will make their decision on National Signing Day on February 6th. That's your latest Hawkeye Sports update. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Nick. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into Tuesday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Here's Daily Iowan Metro reporter Anna Egland as she discusses an article she's working on for tomorrow. I'm writing an article on natural pest control, and I just got back from Earth Source Gardens where I heard Joanne Leach speak about different forms of natural pest control, such as bird and deer netting and uh, sprays you can make at home using garlic and stuff like that. And then I also spoke with some Iowa State professors about um, the bug levels, and they said that the Japanese beetles are a major problem this year. Uh, they're, it's actually, in the past few years, the Japanese beetles have become a major problem. And they're also seeing lower levels of mosquitoes, but higher levels of aphids and earwigs and bugs like that. Um, and also, Joanne Leach also said that um, natural pest control can sometimes work better than pesticides for the home gardener, although pesticides are often used for economic reasons for uh, big farms.
Joanne Leach also said that pesticides can disrupt the natural cycle. So that's one of the benefits for natural pest control. Check out Anna's full article in Tuesday's edition of the Daily Iowan. And before we leave, let's take a quick look at the local weather forecast. Expect clear, sunny skies with a slight breeze and a high of 83 during the day Tuesday. The skies will remain clear Tuesday night and we'll see a low of 62. Temps look to pick up after that and you can expect highs in the 90s in the middle of the week with a chance of showers and thunderstorms beginning Thursday nights and carrying through Saturday. That's your latest update. For the latest news, check out our website, dailyiowan.com. Thank you for watching and have a great evening.